You may be seated. Well, every time in Advent and Christmas seasons when it is cold like it is today, I'm reminded of Christmas of 2003. My grandfather had come to Houston to escape the Illinois cold weather winters. And he was there, 96 years old, was there to worship with us on Christmas Eve, along with my parents and my son, John Koval, who was, um, I think at that time, you would have been almost four, and Cooper, who was a little over one um, years old, and, uh, and my wife, Susan. So multi-generations there gathered together um, at this event. We, we were church planters, Susan and I were. We, we started a church in Cypress, Texas, northwest Houston, so we didn't have a building like this. So we rented an outdoor golf pavilion at the local golf club, and, uh, and that's where we worshiped Christmas Eve. Four! Four! Yep, so <laughs> that's what people said after I gave my sermon. Four! I was hoping for ten, but that was... No. But... Um, We arrived there to set up and get everything ready to go, and it was bitterly cold. It was 7.30 in the evening, and it began to snow. My grandfather, my kid's great-grandfather, arrived at church, bundled up in multiple multiple layers of coats that we could gather around um, at the house because he came to South Texas to escape the winter. We, we sang the uh, prelude songs, and, and all the kids were, like, distracted because they saw this beautiful white hill on the 18th green um, that was covered with snow. So we stopped worship and went out and sledded for a while and, and slid down the hill. It was pretty fantastic. Of course, we were all soaking wet at that time, and we came back into this pavilion for worship. It was just a glorious evening. What was really interesting is where I would preach was right down in kind of the center of the area, and above me was the pinnacle of this building where there were slats in the roof. And so the snow was coming into the building and coming down right on top of me. The whole time I was preaching, I was snowed in, but everybody else was dry. It was a pretty amazing event. Um, it was pretty cool. So. But I'm reminded of that because even in the adversity of that day and the beauty of that day, the Lord still arrived. And our hearts were forever changed. That was the last time that my grandfather worshiped with us. And it's a memory I will cherish forever. It was beautiful. Today in our our gospel, And in the Magnificat that we read together, we are challenged. We are challenged by the beautiful words of Mary. Are you ready? Are you ready? And what are you waiting for? Are you ready to say yes, like Mary said, to our God? Imagine, just imagine, 14 years old, and the angel comes to you and says, you are going to give birth to Emmanuel. God with us. Imagine that. I've often thought about, what did Mary tell her parents? Have you ever thought about that? Like, when she went to go tell her mom and dad, hey, I'm pregnant. What? Well, the angel of the Lord came to me and told me I was pregnant. What? Right? I mean, it would be unbelievable. Unbelievable in so many different ways. And same with Joseph as well. Unbelievable. But instead, Mary said, yes, my soul doth magnify the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Deep faith, gratitude for what God has done, humble service, and devout compassion. That describes Mary. She said, yes. Are you ready? Are you ready to say yes also? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We are called by God through Mary to say yes. You know, I've been watching the news lately, and that's always a dangerous thing, but it's been kind of sad to see how the tornadoes have just done some incredible devastation to 
the eastern part, middle central part of the United States. I mean, town after town, just totally decimated, gone. Reporters standing out there and shoving microphones into people's faces and saying, how do you feel? I mean, how do you think I feel, right? My house is gone, my business is gone, I've lost loved ones, they're dead. My work is gone. How do I feel? Well, one young man said, I feel blessed. That caught my attention. Well, he had gone to a neighbor's house that was no longer there, 18 years old, and began to dig through the rubble to find pictures and mementos, candlesticks and, and any kind of pottery that might still have survived the, the storm and, and the silverware and, and that kind of thing, things that, that the woman who lived there couldn't do herself, but he thought it would be important to go through the rubble to find something meaningful for her to keep. He said, I'm blessed to be able to do such a thing. My house wasn't destroyed, and I'm here to help. Isn't it interesting that in the midst of devastation, we see inspiration? In the midst of devastation, we see people coming from all across the world to, to rescue people, to save people, to heal people, to, to go through the rubble and find meaningful mementos to save for someone else. You see, that's what Jesus does for us. That's what Jesus does for us, and that's what Mary reminds us, is that in the midst of devastation, there will be inspiration. In the midst of the devastation of our own lives, there will be inspiration by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who comes to save us from ourselves, who inspires us to be the church, to be the people of God, to love and care for one another. In the midst of devastation, there is inspiration. Yesterday at Sidewalk Saturday, um, this is not the story that Patrick said, so there's so many different stories at Sidewalk Saturday, it's pretty amazing, and I invite you to be a part of it on the 26th when we do it on Sunday morning. Eldrick came to Sidewalk Saturday for the very first time, and we gather at 8.30 on a normal Saturday morning for prayer, and, and this week there was probably about 100 of us gathered around 45 of the folks from Christ Church and another 50-plus from the neighborhood who were there to receive food and clothing and breakfast tacos and coffee and, and the like. And I usually start with a short devotion and some time of prayer and some announcements. It's nothing outlandish, but it's very real and very, um, very timely for what we're doing and who we are in the community that we want to create and that we are creating when I got done sharing a, a brief uh, meditation, Eldrick, who was behind me, said, Father, now he's never met me before, but he, I guess, knew that in the Episcopal Church you call your priests fathers, and he said, Father, and so I turned around and he said, my name is Eldrick, this is the first time I've been here, and I need prayers. First time standing in front of a hundred people. And this is what he said. This very day last year, my mother died of COVID. And he began to weep. He said, I really want prayers from this community. And so we did. We prayed over him and for him and for the soul of his mother, and we gathered together around Eldrick. Again, the first time he had ever been there. And so I went up to him after we got done with the announcements and, and all of us kind of go back to our places. And I went up to him and I said, Eldrick, what brought you here today? And this is what he said after he let go of hugging me for about five minutes and crying. He said, I have heard that this church prays for those who need prayers. It wasn't, I heard the breakfast tacos were great or that the coffee was good or that you hand out wonderful groceries, or that there's clothing to be had. He said, I heard that this church prays for people who need prayers. And I came. I came. 
You see, we're reminded by Mary that just in a few short days when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, that God, through Jesus Christ, will take the challenges of our lives and turn them into victories. He'll take the challenges of our lives and turn them into victories. Eldrick had a victory yesterday because he was called by God to come to a place that actually would love him and care for him. That's you. You did that for him. That's absolutely amazing. You know, there, there's countless stories, and so I'm going to share a couple more, and then I'll sit down and you can ponder them. <laughs> so, um, last Sunday, there was a group of folks who handed out the Christmas gifts that you all purchased for students here um, in our schools. And I tell you, it was just amazing to see some of our youth group kids and their parents um, carrying the gifts out to the car um, that, that pulled up. And I, I shared this on Wednesday, but it was so profound that I want to share it again with you because you need to hear this story. There was a mother who has eight children. She pulled up in her minivan, and all eight children were in the minivan. Well, one of you purchased a bike for one of her kids. And it, it arrived to the church, not in a black bag like we asked, because the bike was too big to put into a black bag. I mean, believe me, we tried. <laughs> we tried to conceal it. So we went out to the mother and we said, you know, one of our parishioners bought a bike for your son, and, and we can't hide it from him, and he's in the car. She said, don't worry. I've told the kids that their gifts this year are coming from Christ Church. The gifts this year are coming from Christ Church. I want them to know that there's good people out there who will take care of them. Well, we brought the bike out, the youth group did, and, and as soon as she saw it, the mother began to just, just well up with tears, and not just you know, soft tears of joy, but these convulsing, crying tears that uh, all I could do was console her, and we all kind of got around her and gave her a big hug, and, and um, the kids in the car saw that, so they all jumped out wondering what was going on with their mother. And this little boy, this little boy, after seeing his bag with his name on it, and he was so excited, he said, Mister, why do you do this? Why do you do this? I had to think for a moment. And then the Holy Spirit took over and said, through me, because God loves you and this church loves you. And he looked at me for about two seconds and said, okay. <laughs> right? That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. You will give birth to the Christ child. Okay. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. I was looking at Mary in physical form that day. Okay. God loves me. This church loves me. I'm good with that, right? He said yes. This little boy said yes. Eldrick said yes. They said yes like Mary said yes. And yesterday, yesterday in the midst of uh, torrential rain, 23 or more of you went out to Fort Sam Houston to lay wreaths on the headstones of our fallen soldiers. I've done that before. I didn't do it yesterday, but I saw pictures from it, and the pictures were, were absolutely moving. And, and when you lay a wreath, you don't just put it on the headstone. You actually say the person's name and say a prayer for them. The concept is, is that when you lay a wreath and say their name, that their name would be uttered into the heavens, and that soldier would never be forgotten. The sacrifice that they made for you and for me would never be forgotten. Isn't that amazing? From the youngest to some of our eldest members of the church gathered out in the soggy weather to do just that. You see, out of the darkness comes light, and out of the selfishness that we have, Jesus turns it into love. That's what this season is all about, is for us to recognize, like Mary recognized, that, that out of devastation comes inspiration, out of darkness comes light, out of, out of our challenges comes victory. And out of, I've got to remember it here, selfishness comes love. 
That's what Jesus does for us. Are you ready? Are you ready when we gather here on Christmas Eve? Are you ready to say yes like Mary said yes? Are you ready? What are you waiting for? Don't wait for Friday to come. Say yes today like Mary did. Say yes to Jesus Christ. And your life will be forever transformed. You will live in that light and that love and in that inspiration. Are you ready? Mary was. Are you ready to say yes? Mary did. Amen.